It's a master's miracle on the DNVR Broncos podcast. I've got Ryan and Henry and Todd away from the masters to join us today. How lucky am I? How lucky are we to all be here together? It's true. Yeah. It's very true. I mean, the fearsome foursome. Really? Yeah. Is we that can what play, people are we, saying? We, yeah, they are. We That's can play awesome. golf with Dang. this group. We scrambled a mile coming up. Hey, oh, NBR's bowling teams. I think bowling teams are also four people. There's teams of bowling? I think. Yeah. 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 What else do, what else do four people do? Uh, oh, it's a good number for like an amusement park. Is to it? To go over to Elitch's? <laughs> yeah. Of course I didn't yeah. even know that one. Yeah. yeah. Three, two, two. Three. I like it's that. Tough. It's also good for like having Mm, oh, like that's a, true. Uh, yeah. yeah. Double date. Yeah. D- eh. I don't know Four people. It better be quadruple. <laughs> yeah, it better be quadruple. <laughs> yeah, here, you can fifth wheel with us, too. I'm oh, yeah, we forgot him. <laughs> and we are coming to you on the DMVR Broncos podcast. We've got, we've got the whole group rocking and rolling with us. Mm-hmm. So pumped for today's show. It's a big one. So let's just dive right in. Mel Kuyper, did you guys see his <laughs> mock draft this week? Oh, regrettably. Yeah, I think that's how a lot of people are feeling about this. How would you feel if his mock draft came true? Broncos stay at 12 and draft cornerback. Not <clears throat> not quarterback. Cornerback. Quinn Yon Mitchell from Toledo. Well, let me start by saying this. Quinn Yon Mitchell is sick. Yes. He's, like, really, really good. Yep. Uh, and I could, like close my eyes and just like talk myself into they just got a really good player and I just got to be okay with that. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it feels like this weird in between indecision type of thing where it's like, okay, so you want a quarterback and it's not there. And then maybe you, if that's the case, wouldn't you want to trade back and try to like stock up for next year or something like that? And so that part of it is painful. But the more I think about it, the more you can talk yourself into... Oh, you're already doing it. The, <clears throat> all right, we're punting on quarterback this year, which is actually the number one thing that I want to happen. And we're going to lock down cornerback, you know, potentially have be set up for, I don't know, the next 10 years or so at corner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, you envision it. It's like a Sauce Gardner, Pat Sertan sort of combo. Yep. But it does feel very, That'd be nice. with no disrespect to him, Bradley Chubb-esque. Mm. Mm. It's like quarterback stack draft. You've got a pick in there. Oh, but this really good player is available. Let's just take him. Mm. Yeah. Um, I think we need to figure out the quarterback situation or have a plan. So if we go him this year, that means we need the quarterback next year. And I don't really see any openings in free agency that we can go and get. Um, I think it's similar to like Vaughn's a great player and was was our first round pick when he was drafted. But if we don't get Peyton Manning, we don't win a Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I think even if we got a great player as a cornerback, we need a quarterback first and foremost. So I think we have to draft one. And I'm 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 with you, Todd. Outside of if this is if Sean's really willing to do like a long term rebuild, then that would be quarterback next year. Whether it's free agent, whether it's like we're really gonna rock with uh, Jared Stidham to try to lose to tank for two, Let's maybe go. who then would have to change his number because Pat Sertan would be on the team too. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Wait. So, so, yeah. so, so yeah. I brought this up yesterday. I asked the guys. So what would Pat do? Um. He would be amazing for the Commanders. Oh, wow. okay. So wow. that, that's the scenario where just, Shadur gets two. Just kidding, everyone. <laughs> Calm wow. down. Uh, I think you would look great in number three. <laughs> Don't put that number three curse on Pat. Don't do number it. Number one? No, a five. He has five. 
He's there not. He's go. not. Pat's he's not, not changing his number. He's not <laughs> yeah, changing his number. He's Pat's fan. He can still keep the brand of you know <laughs> PlayStation. Yeah. Yeah. And then he changes his number every time a new PS sta- a PlayStation comes out. Dang, would Shador become like the first quarterback to wear twenty one? Just. Ooh. Wow, man! It would look wow. weird at first. It would look crazy. Sure. Yeah, yeah. It would look crazy. Yeah. But if he ends up being sick, then you it would you know become normal. I don't think a quarterback can be good in number twenty one. What did Penix wear right. at no. Indiana? He was wearing a crazy or someone some quarterback in Indiana was wearing a crazy number a couple years ago. Huh. I don't know, mm. like thirty six or something. Oh God, mm. there's no and, way. And they su- I don't even think that's and allowed. They succeeded. You can do anything you want in college. You can. Yeah. No way they succeeded because we can't think of their name. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, it might have been I don't know. Penix was. Okay. Yeah, he was nine. nine. Yeah, That's, nine a That's a sick number. That's a sick number. Oh, it was number 21. Who? Who? Richard Lago. And what's he doing right now? Um, Selling insurance? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Todd, would 21 be a better quarterback number than zero? Yes. No. Even twenty one wow. is better than zero. With, with all the trash. I hate zero as a yep, number, but twenty one <laughs> as a quarterback, I don't know. It just doesn't, it just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel you, right. You'd have to be like a a big Ben, like just a massive quarterback. To or just you're just like really like a running back. Like Taysom Hill could probably yeah, wear twenty one. Yeah, 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 you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Tim Tebow. Yeah, yeah. I think you gotta have. Yeah, you definitely gotta be yeah. like built a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I, yeah, it does look weird. Look, here's the picture of him doing it. Like, it just looks like a oh. wide receiver is playing catch. Wait, uh-huh. was he at Arkansas? No, Indiana. Oh, Indiana. Um, yeah, that lo- it looks very wrong. You're right. Shador could just go to one. Yeah. Who or four? Is there a one on the four team right now? Four is two times two. Four is two. Yeah. Oh two no, squared. stay away from four. I like four. Uh, <laughs> do you think good four number. is a good quarterback number? Yeah. Not great, but good. Okay. Oh, okay. What yeah, is it? What, what's fair. the best quarterback number? Seven. 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 I think it's seven. I think pretty <laughs> easily seven. Yeah. If the Broncos drafted Shadur number Ten one overall, good. no, and wanted number <laughs> seven, does John give it no, up? No, there's no, no way. It you don't even have that, that conversation. <laughs> you would never put that type of uh, expectation on. Him. No. That would be crazy for him that. to get drafted because he doesn't wear number seven. Right, so for him right, to say, like, right. I want number seven, can I get number seven, would be insane. Oh, Maryland lefty no quarterback, number 31. Oh, oh my God. God. Is, is that Tonga Bailoa? No. No. Like, back in the day? <laughs> Obviously, I know he doesn't wear 31 now. Richard Lago. Oh, he Same transferred. Go- oh. Wow. He's, he's like, I'm going to go with it, a weirder number. It looks gross, doesn't it? It <laughs> well, looks yes, terrible. That looks terrible. Yes. Maybe he that's might have been pretty good. the defense off, though. Like, they think it's initially, like, a running back, but no, he can throw the ball. Or yeah. fullback? Oof. 31. It, somehow Justin Simmons was able to pull number 31 off. How, how did we get from Quinion Mitchell to Richard Legat <laughs> yeah. so fast? Well, the show was just on track too much it's with, with you on. Mm-hmm. We, we had to change it up. Um, by the way, shout out to your shirt. I don't know if the listeners can see it, but it's a sick shirt. Mm. I mean, it's the Masters themed with mm. J.R. Smith. Yes. Yep. Uh, it's... Commemorating J.R. Smith's illustrious college golf career. Yeah. One year? I think so. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. So, Quinion Mitchell. <sighs> Man. And so, I think we were going down the quarterback route um, about how the Broncos. It, I'd have to see a plan at quarterback. And if they pass yeah. on quarterback in the first round entirely, then it does show me that Sean's willing to do something that I didn't think he was willing to do. And that's like a full rebuild where you're talking about multiple years for the rebuild. I would be okay with that. I just don't think that's the way Sean's going to operate. If it was any other head coach, I could see that happening. But with Sean, I just don't see it. But I would be okay with it. And especially cornerback, though, is the ultimate, ultimate, for this Broncos team, luxury position. So it's okay to get a a luxury if you're either like the 49ers and you're ready to go for another champion or go for a championship or if you're the Broncos and you know you're rebuilding, yeah, get that cornerback tandem set up for the future. But if they then go and like trade up into the second round and draft Spencer Rattler, then I just I just be confused about what's going on. For sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I first of all, I don't think they're going to trade down because Sean Payton is, doesn't do that. Well, I think it, 2007 was the last time the Saints traded down, or yeah, last time they traded down, they've 
Sean Payton has traded up 25 times since. <laughs> so <laughs> it just it, it seems like the trade down is not 25 straight trade ups without a trade down. That's crazy. So you're just you're it's not Sean Payton way, baby. You're not. I, I I will believe that when I see it. Um, Especially considering trading up historically not a good move. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sean no. says F those picks. <laughs> yeah. He, he does. does. Um, so I, I think the trade down is kind of out of the question, and unless. I'm not going to believe it till I see it. So in that case, obviously, you expect a quarterback or a trade-up for a quarterback. But if it's not a quarterback, I think Quinion Mitchell, Brock Bowers are kind of the two guys who could be on the board at that point who I would I would love to see them draft. And to I me, a, I have a question. Do you guys think he's, like, too similar to Pat? Like, usually when you have two dynamic corners, you have one that is the pass breakup guy and the other guy is the interception guy, and they're both very heavy, like, very good at breaking up passes. Yeah. Do you feel like they're too similar? I wonder. Well, I think I like it because Pat sticks to one side of the field so much. We see him fall receivers occasionally, but I think that if this was a team where they're really playing the matchup, then you could say like, yeah, give me like a, a little shiftier guy, uh, somebody who can go pick b- balls up. When when it's Pat on one side and you can just plug whoever you want on the other, like I think I think Mitchell's well rounded enough and like fast enough to cover speed guys, maybe a little small against the biggest receivers, but not enough that'd be concerned. In that case, maybe that's when you do have Pat follow somebody. I think that the thought process behind this would be they've got to throw at somebody, mm-hmm. and the uh, whoever that ends up being, probably Quinion Mitchell at least to start, yeah. is going to get those picks. Mm-hmm. You know, like if, if Pat Sertan got 10, 12 chances a game, he's going to start upping his picks. For that'd sure. be crazy. If yeah. he taught that your point, is exactly why my number one cornerback for the Broncos in this draft would be Terry and Arnold mm-hmm. is because he is that interception guy. And he may get beat a couple of times trying to make a play. Um, and that would come with the territory of that. But the teams are going to be forced to throw Terry on's way if he's on the other side of Pat. And he is that interception playmaker guy. And they would complement each other so well. Plus, it'd be dope having two Alabama guys. But that's why it, in this scenario, I really don't like corner. Because I think there's three, four first-round cornerbacks that the Broncos could have. And if you're going to go corner in the first round, this is maybe one of the rare times I am okay and actually pushing to trade back in the draft, pick up an extra second-round pick, because I don't think there's a big difference between the number one cornerback in this draft and the number three or four cornerback in this draft. I'm talking <laughs> Cooper DeGene, Terry on Arnold, Quinion Mitchell. And then you could also put Kool-Aid McKinstry in there as well. Um, and so... Trade back to the mid twenties and get a future first round pick if you can, or at least get a second round pick this year. If you're going corner, give me any of those four. It's the complete opposite conversation of quarterback. Where quarterback, you only draft a guy if Sean's in love with them, and then mm-hmm. if he is, you do anything you can to go get him. Corner, little different. There's some elite corners out there, and you can go get any of those guys. Yeah, I think so. And I think it's also important to have other options. Like I think it's great to have a game record at every level. So we have one in the secondary, that's Pat. Linebacker, mm-hmm. I feel like we have some, Alex is a phenomenal linebacker, um, but nobody would consider him like a game wrecker. And then up front, we definitely don't have like a game wrecker that you gotta worry about. I feel like in one of those spots, having somebody to even help. If you have a good defensive end, I know we weren't talking defensive end or outside linebacker. Yeah. There's a couple of good ones, Dallas Turner, a couple yeah. of good ones in this draft. If we can get a game wrecker there, I feel like it actually would be more beneficial mm. to have him there than a dynamic quarterback, cornerback, because I think that the outside linebacker could do more to affect the game, like initially, and I also help whoever we do have at cornerback. So if Sean says to to you, you're George Payton, and Sean says you have to take a defensive player here yep. at twelve, you're going the Dallas Turner route. Yeah, I think route. so. That makes sense, and that's just again why corner is such a luxury is because it's you don't have to have it. In fact. The Broncos are hosting a cornerback today, and we're going to talk about that. But I got to give a shout out to our draft coverage uh, presenter, who is Raisin Canes. Raisin Canes Ooh. is the <laughs> absolute best. Got to go get some chicken fingers from uh, Raisin Canes this week. Ryan, are you a cold slot guy? Yes. Oh, my God. Thank you. I thought but, I was going. Oh, no. Hold on. <laughs> oh, no. Coleslaw has a, a, a pretty high ceiling and an incredibly low floor. It's a really good point. Like, if you get lame coleslaw, mm-hmm. it is so lame. Like, the coleslaw that's just the vinegar and it has no flavor. <sighs> I agree with you. If there's not some sort of, like, light hue 
on the coleslaw, yep. it's not going to slap. And Where does that light hue generally come from? Mayo. The mayo. Okay. okay. Yeah, light hue. What? A, that's an interesting the way to describe a food. No, but it sounds so smart. That's why I wanted to expand. Yeah, I was, I was <laughs> trying mayo. to not get paused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, yeah. Well, it, you'll love Raisin Cane's coleslaw because it's the creamy oh, so coleslaw. Mm. It is delicious <laughs> as well as their buttery Texas toast. You can get it all. And of course, the crinkle cut fries. Have you heard of the whole uh, like sandwich that people the, the kind of yeah. homemade Raisin Cane sandwich? Yeah. I love that you can go to Raisin Cane's and make a homemade sandwich. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so you just and, need an extra yeah. piece of toast. So what are you putting on? You go two pieces of Texas toast, yep. three chicken fingers. Yep. Three? Yep. I mean... The Caniac combo? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, coleslaw yep. and cane sauce. Okay, so you're putting the coleslaw. Because yeah, I'm yeah. putting the coleslaw. These two are just doing the cane sauce. See, that's the thing. If I get the meal, I sub the coleslaw for extra toast. So that way I don't have uh. to get another toast. Outside mm, of the smart. meal, got to make the sandwich. You know, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Smart That's shoppers, smart. So you know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> so check out our friends over at, uh, over at Raisin Canes uh, and order online or through the app because the lines are long because people love it, and this will help you skip the line. Raisin Cane Chicken Fingers, one love. Also, uh, go buy a Toyota. Yeah. Uh, I've been uh, with I, all I, that I, money you save on the exactly. <laughs> don't buy the toast buy the Toyota yeah um, I got on like their their like car builder thing last night like you know how you can like mm, yep. choose all the options for yep. yourself I went to that forerunner and yep. uh, it was kind of fun because the thing is I'm not like sometimes those outdoorsy cars look really cool like you get like the big bars on the top and all that mm -hmm. stuff I just don't I, I never have a need for those and so you go through and you have to decide, like, do I want this because I need it or because it looks cool? Is looking cool enough? But I had a lot of fun. I made, like, this big black Toyota 4Runner, um, which you guys can do as well. <laughs> what? He's laughing at me. <laughs> damn, uh, damn it. Um, yeah, Toyota, they make all sorts of other cars, too. The 4Runner, like I said, it's kind of the streets are talking, according to my girlfriend. Um, go over to your front range toyota stores they have locations all over um the auto nation toyota arapaho and centennial the corwin toyota in boulder groove toyota in littleton the mountain states toyota in denver stevenson toyota east in aurora and stevenson toyota west in lakewood toyota official automotive automotive partner of the nfl and the official vehicle of dmvr people love when rk is on the show so it's a little friday treat but in 13 days you're going to be on the show again, our yeah. draft show mm, yeah. night one. Make sure to stay tuned. We're going to be live the entire first round of the draft. Also, day two of the draft, we're going to be live and day three. But day one, you got to come down to Breckenridge Brewery Farmhouse where we are going to be having our draft party. You get a ticket for $15 and you get a beer and a burger with it and you get to hang out with us party starts at 5 30 so we can do some meet and greet and mingle with you guys before the show and then you can hang out and see who the broncos draft so make sure to stay tuned uh over at the dnvr.com and our socials to get your tickets i will be mm -hmm. on the show but i've been told that my number one job is just to hang with the people mm. which is the thing i'm best at yeah okay todd was told the same thing oh because and people was, want to meet Todd. Andre was told the same thing. So, so am I? Am I just going to be sitting there myself because nobody wants to meet me? It's well, the stanky it's, hanky show. It's, it's, <laughs> maybe you're just you're, you're the one constant because uh, no one wants to meet. Yeah, you. I'm the constant. Okay. <laughs> oh sure, because man. Nobody, yeah. Todd, this couch you might want to avoid because these are the two guys that don't shower necessarily every day. What are you See, talking? He does. That. He keeps calling me. The are you on the same oh, wavelength yeah. as him? Well, okay, let's hear, gonna do with that that let's hear what, oh, the, let's hear what the wavelength is. What was your take? You don't always have to shower. You should shower. If you're coming like here, for example, yes, yeah, shower before you go see people. You go to the gym, absolutely you shower. Yep. But like you go to the gym Saturday night, you know, 7 o'clock because you don't do a lot of things like I don't. Take a shower Saturday night. Mm -hmm. You don't need to shower Sunday. You're just sitting on the couch watching football 100% correct. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Yeah. You don't shower feel Monday. like... Crisp and clean. Like there was, there's days where like, well, I use washcloths. I don't know if anybody else uses washcloths. No, like, we talked about talk this. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'll like, you know, not really do anything or just have like a light day, hang with the kids, and you still scrub your body, and like there's still dirt on it. Like, yeah, you know no. what I'm saying? Just kind of chilling. Yeah, what? no, you you convinced me at the Super Bowl. I need to start watching wash or where using, using washcloths. washcloths. Yeah, I still haven't though. 
But you're, you are right about that. Yeah, uh, white people really late to the game. That's what Reddit says. That's what Reddit says. Yes. No. Oh, that's sad. It uh, is it, sad. Yeah. It, it's just like a car. Like you use, you got to use bristle, uh, bristles or something, Can right? Because you, you just so, you can't just <laughs> soap a car and then wash it that's off. That's true. Uh, yeah. Um, what else? Showerless Sunday is totally acceptable. The thing is, like. You just got to not be doing anything. Like if the only exactly. person you're seeing is the DoorDash driver, you don't need <laughs> to shower that day. Okay. Totally. Yeah. Oh, also the other mistake I made was saying my girlfriend didn't shower that day. Mm -hmm. she, oh. had, she said she's, it on the pod. Yeah, she put said, it on blast. And then she told me very clearly that she did and that I just didn't notice because I'm an idiot. So. so that was my <laughs> other question for Hank. So if like Sunday is like a non-shower day, if like at the end of the day, does that mean there's no action happening Sunday night? <laughs> that is night? generally no. what that would be. <laughs> okay, like, okay. That is, there are cons. Especially are if she showered. Yeah. yeah she's yeah, probably yeah. like, no, no, absolutely no, not happening. Yeah. <laughs> like, that does factor in. <laughs> Um, okay, so we were talking about Quinion Mitchell, Broncos drafting a cornerback. Is there any way the Broncos draft a corner in the first round if they sign Levi Wallace because he's in for a visit today? Or would everyone have to change their mock drafts if the Broncos do sign Levon Wallace, who's visiting the Broncos today? Levi Wallace is like Fabian Moreau. Maybe a little better. Yep. I think he started more. Uh, Fabian certainly had the better... That I could, that could have been so some, much worse, and it didn't even leak. But yeah, it's I a good heard water it bottle. break. Okay, um, I heard broken the glass. Uh, yeah, Levi <laughs> Wallace did not have a uh, as good of a season as Fabian Moreau did. Like that's okay. just like the bottom line. Steelers fans, I went I went through too many posts. They really wanted him gone, so he wound uh. up getting benched about five games in, um, and then Joey Porter took his spot. And then the other corner got hurt, so then he played more at the end of the year. Um, and th th he made uh, some plays, too. There's, like, 11 pass breakups, a couple interceptions. Um, but he doesn't have, like, the long speed down the field. But if you want to play him in, like, the flat zones, he'll get his hands on some balls. Like, he's obviously a super smart player. He's been a starter in the NFL for, like, six years. Um, to me, like, bring him in. Let him compete. If Riley and Damari aren't ready to, to be a starter, you've got somebody who can do that job. Probably not Pro Bowl level, but for the veteran minimum, most likely, that's that's a good option to have on the roster. Yeah, I think he's a great option to have with <coughs> Riley Moss and Damari Mathis because, just like you said, he's the veteran where if neither of those guys are ready to be that starter opposite Pat Sertan, mm -hmm. then you have a guy that has started many years and a great player to plug and play there. But to me, I, I wouldn't get it then if you go and draft a first-round cornerback as well. If you draft a cornerback at 12, he better be your day Definitely. one starter, yeah. just like start. Pat Sertan was for the Broncos. So I wouldn't really understand it. I would not mock a corner to the Broncos if the Broncos signed Levi Wallace. Yeah, because um, they wouldn't be doing it for depth because I feel like they already have that now. And he has start starting abilities or experience. So I think it would be purely to compete for that starting job. Um, if they drafted the corner on top of that, I need some drug tests at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would want to. Then I'd be like, is, "Does Sean Payton really have power mm -hmm. in this organization it anymore?" Makes sense. I don't think it matters to be honest. I think yeah. this late in the game, it's going to be pretty cheap, um, so True. it's not going to be a large investment in the cornerback position. Uh, but it would be like a weird double down on corner over the span of a couple weeks when you have such large holes. I keep coming back to this Bradley Chubb comparison because mm. it's like you had Von Miller. You had, you could have had Shaq Barrett, or you had Shaq Barrett, um, and then you doubled down on the position instead of going to the most important position in sports. It, it bothered me. Then here's the other thing I'm thinking about: Who's the highest drafted player on the Broncos' offense? Oh, one to jump to the top of my mind was Cortland. Cortland, uh, second round pick, Mike McGlinchey, early second round pick, Mike McGlinchey, yeah, number nine. Mike. Okay. Uh, and who's the highest drafted Bulls player by the Broncos? Bulls. Bulls. Yeah, it would be Bulls, right? Oh, yeah, Bulls. 20th overall. So 2016 draft? 17. 17 draft? Yep. We're in, it's 2024. Yeah. Like. And the Broncos have had higher picks. And the Broncos offense sucks. And they haven't yeah. invested high capital in it, or at least invested and in succeeded. Yep. Yeah. In all that time? Yeah, exactly. Um. At some point, you have to start, like, trying to make the offense better. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. And mm -hmm. just, oh, man, 
considering they had the number five overall pick last year, but that was traded for Russell Wilson. That could have been used on wow. an Anthony Richardson or something like he'd that. Be fun. And then, uh, oh yeah, he'd be a ton of fun. Then obviously number five with Bradley Chubb, you use that on defense. Yep. Number nine, Pat Sertan, you use that. You had number nine that was traded for the Russell Wilson pick. Man, that's yep. wild. You did. You you had Noah Fant and Jerry Judy. Yeah. Since Bulls, right? Yeah. And yep. you look. What's the best part of the Broncos' offense right now? Offensive line. Offensive line. Or just Cortland Sutton. No, I I, I would say offensive okay. line. Um, and uh, it shouldn't be a surprise. That's where their biggest investments are. Garrett Bowles, first-round pick, plus you paid him. Mike McGlinchey, you paid him a ton of money, plus he was a former first-round pick. Uh, at guard, you're paying Ben Powers a ton of money. And then at the other guard, you use a third-round pick, which is a significant investment when you're talking about a guard. And then the center position up in the air right now. But it's no wonder why that's the strongest entire position on the offense. It's because that's what you invested in. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. And it's, yeah. Got to get a quarterback. And that's just why I, (laughs) man, I have a hard time, even if it's not quarterback, I have a hard time seeing Sean Payton not go offense in the first round. And if, let's say, he doesn't like Michael Penix Jr. or Bo Nix, then don't take him at 12. But I have a hard time. Brock Bowers is there? What if he isn't? That's when it gets tough, I think. Well, then. Can you draft a tackle? So what you're saying is there's. (laughs) Like, only one defensive player off the board at that point, really? Yeah. Wouldn't be the craziest thing. Or just not very many tackles. But I feel like Sean's this, not quarterback guru, but he's been a quarterback coach for so long and a head coach. I feel like with his ability to dictate defense and prepare QBs, you should be able to figure out or make the best game plan for a Bo Nix or a Penix. I think that, you know, with his pedigree, Either of them should work. Whether you're, like, totally in love with them or you like them a little bit, I think that Sean Payton is what takes them over the edge. So I think no matter what, it should be quarterback. So then saying that, though, don't you think Sean says if he doesn't love one of those guys, he just likes one of them, he'd look at Jared Stidham and say, why would I take one of those guys if I can do the same thing with Jared Stidham? Because I think he, both I are if, better. Yeah, I don't already. know. They, yeah. I, I personally don't disagree. Yeah. But like Sean just does seem to be, like, more sold on Jared Stidham than anyone else. Yeah, I kind of agree with what Todd was saying. I haven't really thought of it this way, but if you're just talking about what is the best way to make the Broncos a better team in 2024, I think Bo Nix probably upgrades the the team more than probably even a Quinion Mitchell does. Like a rookie cornerback versus a quarterback who, like you got to design an offense around him. Like the, the ceiling isn't high. You're probably, the, it's unlikely you're going to stick with him past his rookie contract, but it does kind of patch a major gap and make the whole team a lot better. If he's good. I, I Yeah. But he's it's, you should in. never be drafting he's for how can we be <laughs> yeah. the most better next year. True. That did, probably didn't sound right, but... It made sense. I liked it. It, it. You're drafting for how do we eventually win a Super Bowl, in my mm-hmm. opinion, yeah. especially at the quarterback position. Um, and I think Bo Nix, that's the biggest thing that scares me about him. There's a lot of things that I like about Bo Nix, but... It doesn't feel like he has a Super Bowl ceiling. No, I totally agree. That that's not going to happen. That's why I go Penix because I think he can do both. But I do think Knicks, you, you run that little quick game stuff that Sean likes. There's some like R, a whole bunch of RPOs, some like read options. It isn't the greatest offense, but I think that offense is better than the Jarrett Stidham offense, and maybe that's worth considering. So my question is, how far does Sean raise your quarterback ceiling? Like I don't know if was I don't think Drew Brees was necessarily a Super Bowl winning quarterback, but yep. it's right when he got to New Orleans. So if Bo Nix yeah. comes in, if he's a win two playoff games type quarterback, can Sean raise him to a? You know what does what's the Sean Payton effect for a new quarterback coming in? Drew Brees is a perfect example. Mm-hmm. I think he was a second round pick and then was coveted by a couple of teams in, in free agency, but it wasn't like Peyton Manning hitting the free agent market or Tom Brady being a free agent, he was viewed as a good quarterback. And Sean turned him in to, from a good quarterback to not just Super Bowl winning quarterback, but a Hall of Fame quarterback. Yep. Yeah, the question is, can ceil- <clears throat> can a ceiling be changed? If it if it can, then it doesn't, the whole concept of a ceiling doesn't really even make sense. Is it Sean can help you reach your ceiling yeah. and actually get to it? Because like, if, if someone has a ceiling right now, that means that's the best they can be. 
which might just be a stupid conversation to have ever, but we do it a lot around mm -hmm. the draft. We really um, do. Whereas if Bo Nix's ceiling is Super Bowl winning quarterback, then you would say, well, Sean Payton has a, as good of a chance as anyone is helping him reach that ceiling. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, I don't, I, I don't know if that is even a real thing it, it, and it can't be tested. What if it's just like a renovation, like a uh, pop the top? I guess a one story house, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Sean uh, comes in, does some construction. You know what I'm saying? Uh, speaking of Super Bowl winning quarterbacks and Super Bowl ceilings, the fans have voted for the most ideal draft pick for the Broncos. And I think they went for the super high ceiling on this one. We have the results of our March Madness, and let's get to them. After I tell you, you got to cop pop open a Coors Light this weekend. 80 degrees on Sunday. I think like 77 tomorrow. There is no better beer to chill with than our friends over at Coors Light. Whether you're at a bar, whether you're at the DNVR bar, whether you're outside on a patio, Coors Light is the beer to go to because it's all about chilling. Whether you're with friends, whether you're hanging outside um, in your backyard, it, everything about Coors is about chilling because it's bottled cold. Uh, it's brewed cold. And even the cans will tell you when the beer is cold enough to drink because of those blue mountains. So if you want to chill this weekend like we all do, Coors Light is the beer we go to when we want to chill. So make sure to check them out over at CoorsLight.com slash DNVR, where that will get Instacart to get Coors delivered straight to you. Go to CoorsLight.com slash DNVR. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. And shout out to our friends over at Circa Resorts and Casinos. I was trying to like, get, I didn't know if I said <laughs> me. I don't know, but it's all good. Uh, they are home to the world's largest sport book, sports book. They have three story stadium style seating. And I feel like uh, there's no better place to, to place a bet. And especially right now with the Masters, uh, it oh, got to yeah. be great to be there. Oh, yeah. Where I get to see multiple holes. I feel like that's, <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> that's the wrong way to say it, but you can you, see, to see the players <laughs> to see playing on different <laughs> fairways at yeah. once. You know, you uh, it's a great place to place a bet. Uh, um, you, you won't be disappointed. You can go check out Circa right now. You, if you're headed out to Vegas, you can use code DMVR20 to get 20% off your stay. Remember, we love Cir Circa. Go check them out. Go check out the sports book. Go see those fairways. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Um, every day we have a whole conversation. Just with the Masters 18, 18 of them. <laughs> All right, you here? Let's reveal the winner of our March Madness bracket where the fans voted on who the best or the most ideal Broncos draft pick would be. And it is Drake May. Now, do want to point out. We kept three of the top prospects off the board because we thought they weren't realistic options. Okay, okay. Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, and Marvin Harrison Jr. Because okay. we just assumed that those wouldn't yeah. be realistic options. But J.J. McCarthy was available. Um, Bo Nix was available. The other quarterbacks, Michael Penix Jr., um, all of those guys were available. Romo Dunze was available. Some other guys that probably won't be there for the Broncos. We made them available, and the people voted on Drake May. Okay, how did this happen? So, Drake May started <laughs> off against... Can we pull that up again? Um, he, pl he went against uh, Luatu Latu. Okay. Um, so, clearly yeah, he won yeah. that. Then Jared Verse. Okay. Then he faced J.J. McCarthy. That one surprises me. I agree. And then in the finals, he faced Bo Nix. Michael Penix went out in the first round? Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Can we keep Travesty. that graphic up really quick here? Um, yep, Penix, Penix went out in the first round. Pretty much every other quarterback, though, or every other quarterback, went to the Final Four. Yeah. Uh, okay. I don't know how it happened. Well, I mean, I now see how it happened. I don't know how it happened. Well, do you think it's because Drake May potential? Now, we all think potential is kind of a silly word and mm -hmm. the highest ceiling at least i think is a bit silly but when when you look at ceiling potential to me you look at physical tools drake may especially when you take Jaden daniels and caleb williams off the board certainly does have the best physical tools i think uh yes without who'd you say is off the board uh Jayden caleb, daniels. caleb and Jaden. yep i don't know about that hmm I don't know about, what about Joe Milton. <laughs> <laughs> don't get me started on Joe Ryan's Milton. guy, Joe Milton, yeah, right? Ryan's guy, Joe That's Milton. My guy. Um, I don't know. 
The arm strength, I think, is under what it's advertised as. Uh, the athletic ability is there, but not exciting. I don't okay. know if that's... It, maybe you could get excited it's over it. It's kind of like but. Justin Herbert's athletic yeah. like running ability, and that's, right? And I think because he kind of looks like Justin Herbert, and he wears number 10, mm. and he kind of runs like Justin Herbert, people are like, this guy could be Justin Herbert. But I don't think his arm is even like... 80% to Justin Herbert. Wait, but Ryan, they had to go outside for the final two throws of his pro that's day. That's Joe Milton. They stole oh, that's Joe Milton. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, Joe Milton. Milton. <laughs> <laughs> that's right out of the Joe Milton Well, then he doesn't book. even get that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think the ceiling is that high, and that's why I'm not excited about it. I, I'm actually very big on drafting a high ceiling, low floor player because it's like, if, you, if they just bottom out and it doesn't work, well, then just go back to it. It's when you get stuck with someone who's good but not great, like Kirk Cousins, that you think you're like a couple pieces away from winning a Super Bowl, but at least as of right now, you you could never win a Super Bowl with Kirk Cousins. Gosh, you know what is just so brutal in this? Paxton Lynch fits exactly what you're saying to the extent where he bottomed out. Fast. Fast, and the Broncos had that number five overall yeah. pick, but then they, they got scared off. Allen. But they got scared mm -hmm. off. Yes. And so that's could've something that you couldn't do that you have to make sure you follow through all the way is if you're going to go with that high ceiling, low floor guy, don't be scared off once that low floor does hit and you want to reboot. Yep. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I... I was actually really good about my rule for years of not hating draftable quarterbacks. The truth is, loving or hating any of these guys is a fool's errand um, because it's all kind of luck-based. Uh, there's way too many variables that we, before we know what team they're on, we have no idea what these guys will turn out to be, but I'm very much not high on Drake May or Bo Nix for that matter. Mm. Todd, how, how much of a dream pick would this be? Let's say he falls all the way to 12. If he falls all the way to 12, uh, my guy's Michael Penix, but we're not talking about him right now. Um, <laughs> I think we have to take him. I think he... I think I think it's once again that Sean Payton effect. I think we've seen what it was with Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson was a very different quarterback the year before um, and struggled yeah. a lot, and the offense struggled. Yeah. And I think that Drake May, uh, the season he had two years ago, was phenomenal. He was making a lot of great plays, a lot of great throws. Similar to Caleb Williams, he had a year that wasn't as great. And so now people are really critiquing his work. But I think that his physical abilities, as well as his ability to stand in the pocket, I feel like that's something I really – quarterbacks don't do that anymore. You know, he stand, he'll stand there and he'll take the hit. Mm -hmm. And I feel like he's mm -hmm. – that will work well for Sean Payton if he can get him the right reads, the right weapons – I don't think it's a bad pick at 12. Yeah, and if he's picking them at 12, it means he's got Sean Payton's stamp of approval. It mm -hmm. means he loves them. So that that part, if they draft any quarterback in the first round, I'm saying, man, Sean loves him, so I'm I'm in on this pick. If it is Drake May, I'll just I'll be a little more skeptical than if it were um maybe anyone else in the first round. Um, like a Michael Penix Jr. Um, so that that's how I feel is the Broncos draft him. He's got Sean's stamp of approval. But for me, this is not a dream pick personally. Yeah. yeah. I mean, people complain about Michael Penix Jr. and what he did in the championship game. He played better in that game than Drake May played in his most recent game against NC State. And that game was not a national championship game where you're playing against the best team in the, in the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And guess what else Penix did was the two games before that. And yeah, so I, there's just too many... There's too much bad stuff on Drake May's tape and not enough good things. You know, one of the things I say about Bo Nix over and over again is that I'd rather just have somebody who can, who's proven that they can do tougher things than just hit a bunch of slants and all that. But I'm not convinced Drake May can hit slants because half the time he throws them, he just spikes them. And whenever he throws an out route, he throws it 10 feet over the guy's head. And so all of a sudden you're just saying like, well, if he figures out how to be an accurate quarterback, he could be good. When really that seems like kind of the number number one thing for a quarterback is you at least have to be able to throw the ball to the guy who you're trying to throw the ball to. And if you can't do that, it's like drafting a receiver who can't catch. Like, what's the point? Who would do that? Who, <laughs> yeah. Who would do that? <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. I don't, I don't, it's not a dream, but I think it's worth, he's worth taking at 12 mm -hmm. because anytime we talk about a good quarterback, we always mention their head coach or their officer coordinator. They go hand in hand. Yeah. Yep. And yep. so, um, 
I'm not saying he had a great offensive coordinator. I don't know mm-hmm. how good his offensive coordinator was. We know how good Caleb Williams was and yep. what he's done with other quarterbacks. Yep. Could, you know, Drake may have flourished under him. Yep. I think it goes hand in hand. So mm-hmm. I don't, I'm not sure. Just like the talent level he's playing against, the coaching that he received, was it sufficient enough to have him at his best or is what he's putting on tape kind of like his natural ability and he can kind of go up from there. And then one more thing to be fair to Drake May, coaching is huge, um, but then also the talent around him. Mm -hmm. Among these top six quarterbacks, Drake May did have the worst talent around him. And uh, like literally so many of these other guys had like multiple first round picks surrounding them. Mm -hmm. Drake May didn't have that. So maybe give that a little bit benefit. To him, I'm not going to knock the other guys for having that. I mm-hmm. still think Jaden Daniels, despite having two first-round picks uh, ar- <clears throat> around him, is a-, a great player. I think Michael Penix Jr. did the exact same thing. Um, but that is something that maybe you could could give to Drake. Mm-hmm. If they Ryan's take him not, at 12, Ryan's though. not buying it. You know. No, I, know. <laughs> I, was, I was honestly just trying to think of all the other quarterbacks and the talent around them. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, but I, I think you're right. But even, even like Bo Nix, like you don't even think about him, but he has... Troy Franklin, potential first round pick, who's like a run after the catch guy, which is perfect. He also has the running back, Bucky Irving, who could be the first running back who goes off the board. And he's receiving back. So he's doing all that stuff too. So I they always have a great offensive line. Mm -hmm. Especially when, you know, you you play a couple teams in the Pac twelve who don't have the best defensive lines. Yep. And you just kind Mm -hmm. of bowl over them and it's that easy. Yeah, I mean, and you could make the same case about Michael Penix. Best offensive line in the country. You know, three of those receivers. uh, First round pick wide receiver, like two on day two. Yeah. So JJ McCarthy too. Best second best offensive line. <laughs> Wide receivers like crazy, running back. Yep. Yep. But Todd, you should have seen what he done in practice. Crazy. Ball. <laughs> yep. Um, okay, so let's wrap this conversation up by giving me your dream pick. And let's kind of follow this model at twelve. So you can't trade up for Jaden Daniels. Um, or you can't trade up. Who is the most realistic dream pick in your eyes? Henry? My dream pick is definitely a quarterback. So I, th- I think it'd be Penix, honestly. Because you look around, I think McCarthy is in the conversation. I think May's in the conversation. Knicks I wouldn't be excited about, but I, th- I think I have to go quarterback here. And so it'd really have to be one of those three. So as much as I'm not in love with Drake May, if they draft him there, there aren't many things I would prefer over that. Yeah. For all the like hand-wringing we've done over not throwing a dart, trying to hit on a quarterback i i won't get mad at them if they do yep um Three. regardless of who it ends up being mm-hmm. but uh i think for me i'm trying to see if i'm thinking what i want most for sean payton i think it's jj mccarthy and i think that's probably unlikely but we're, we're talking dreams here yep if i'm thinking based off just my own personal feelings i think it would be Penix. um but I'll try to you know get on Sean's wavelength here and say it's JJ. And I'm going JJ as well for Sean's wavelength, um, for my wavelength as well. And did you see what Adam Schefter said this week about JJ McCarthy's stock? He said he's closer to the eight to twelve range than he is the top three range, and he said eight to twelve. So maybe he does fall to the Broncos, and because there is that chance, that possibility, I'm gonna go JJ. Um, I would really like it, and I think I do think he's one of two Sean guys. I'm going to say Michael Penix. You guys yeah. know he's my Stay guy. True. But on top of that, I think if he has maybe one less injury in any other year, I think he's the number one quarterback in the nation. Oh. He's, mm. He had 4,500 yards back-to-back mm. years, took his team to the uh, championship, a Washington team that nobody expected to be there, talent or not. He's been a baller, and he's proven it. I feel like he would be the number one quarterback in the draft yep. if it wasn't this class. Yep. It's a really good point. I like it. Really good point. So we all win quarterback. Shocker. I mean, <clears throat> like, uh, the Broncos draft Brock Bowers. It's just, like, not that exciting. It's cool. He's exactly. a good player, but, like, it's still going to be probably the least anticipated Broncos season of my lifetime next year if they draft Brock Bowers. And that's so the true. thing. is like, I don't... I think it might the smart thing building this team might be to take a non quarterback this year and get a quarterback next year, but I I really just want the quarterback now and get it over and hope that it works out and gives some excitement. Yeah, um, I I just wish we could go in the time machine like for my ideal world where they just 
stand pat, you know, trade back a little bit, build up some capital, and then we just go in a time machine. The Broncos do. I stay and watch the Buffs. Play <laughs> this year. But, you know, we just skip next year. If, like, you, if you had a time machine, where would you go? Is that what you would do? Like, if you had a time machine to go to one place one time and then come back, where would you go? You get one trip? One trip for a day. Oh, for a day? Yeah. Back or forward? Back or forward, you get one day. Um, <clears throat> I think I would go back, like, one year ago. Mm-hmm make a insane parlay that gets me <laughs> wow. generational wealth yeah. and my life changes zero percent except now i'm just super rich yeah. what's the parlay <laughs> i mean just all the champions yep. of their sports yeah yeah and oh, then i put yeah. like all of my money yeah. on it mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so technically you could parlay even. like every everything that's every happened over the last yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, every one God. of them and then put ten dollars down well, why not put more? Because uh, there's no way a casino <laughs> because would you're getting let you. <laughs> <laughs> if you yeah, have like 200 results. I won't results. go to Circa. Yeah. Make I'll go to one of their competitors and just put them out of business. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like you yeah. would put any of their competitors out of business. What's the largest parlay you can win? Like, a bi- like what? What did Could you win a billion do? dollar parlay? Or like, oh, yeah. Do they eventually just cut you off and say like, no, well, you can't some, win that much money. Some sports books do like the, you have to be approved. Like we'll we'll place the first ten dollars of this bet now, but the other forty dollars has to be approved because like the number is so big. Okay, I see you made some crazy parlays. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Rockies suck. <laughs> uh, we got to give some shout outs to our new yes. diehard members. Got to give a shout out to Jared. And Wesley. And BK. <laughs> and Yarbs. And Gregory. And Mount Nuggets for Life. And Daylight 33. And Bash and Boulder. Whoa, and whoa, don't bash Donovan. Boulder. Shout out to that our new good. members. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Bash and Boulder. Oh, yeah. A Chill new member. Out. You got to love them, Ryan. No, it must be Bash <laughs> in Boulder. Oh, a Bash, oh. Bash in Boulder. You had a couple of those, didn't you? I, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh. if you want to join our family and become a die hard go to the dnvr.com where we really appreciate the diehards who get so many perks including you get a t-shirt every single year at renewal including when you sign up you get access to all of our diehard level content when henry's got great content every single week mm-hmm. on the dnvr.com members only discord 20 percent off events 20 percent off merch ad free website uh and so many exclusive members only merch things as well so check us out over at the dnvr.com it really supports us and there's so many perks as well and oh, a shout out to our friends over at volo <laughs> yes volo is actually sick um they just sent me a notification this morning that said happy hour tonight at uh el patio Mm. Ooh, you know, right in Lodo. Yeah. They have Mexican food? Volo pass members, which I am one. Mm-hmm. Two free drinks. Whoa. Whoa. So, like, you just start your Friday night by pulling up downtown, get two free drinks, meet some cool people, hang out, and then, you know, do whatever else you want with the rest of the night. And that's just, like, a random thing that I just learned about Volo today. Yeah. Wow. But on dope. top of that, we've got a bowling league that we're joining. Uh, I've played multiple pickleball leagues. We did kickball, beer in hand kickball. Mm. Uh, so many fun things to do. And right now is the ultimate Volo season because there's a bunch of stuff you can do outside. They have um, like bags or cornhole, uh, cornhole yeah. uh, <laughs> leagues that are just like at bars that have outdoor patios. You oh, just go hang out there goodness. and play bags against people. It's, uh, it's a great time. And here's my number one tip when it comes to Volo. If you are single... Mm. This is the oh, absolute oh, 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 number oh, oh. one way for you to meet people wow. mm. that you know are, are similar to you, active, uh, around. <laughs> this, is, this is the move. What's your number one tip for people who aren't single? Um, whatever your... Buy a ring. Bring your wife. <laughs> yeah. Bring your wife to Volo. <laughs> Bring your wife to Volo. Oh, Volo or else. for people who aren't single? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, still do duos. It. <laughs> duos. Oh, oh, yeah. Like you guys could yeah. be a cornhole team. Oh, wow. They have like mixed doubles. Yeah, they have, well, I mean, it's, yeah, we have mixed doubles pickleball. Wow. Yeah, and the last time that Spencer and I played in, in the semifinals, we played a husband and wife. Kicked and their asses? We beat them so handily that, like, I was worried about their marriage. 
Oh my oh, gosh. Nice. Were they going back and forth with each other? Yeah. Spencer wow. was like, dude, they were chirping each other walking <laughs> out. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. At my wow. gym today, I, I, I worked out this morning. Oh, um, that's what I'm talking about, baby. Wow. <laughs> yeah, um, and, and they had like pickleball league in the gym going on. I don't know if it was like 70 plus, but that's who was in the gym, maybe because it was a Friday morning. <laughs> oh, nice. These people oh. were ruthless. They're unreal. I could not believe it. Low key, you might get automatically better at pickleball the older you get. The huh. only sport? Uh, not golf. 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 golf has like a, yeah. there's, there is a curve. There's a drop there's a off curve, eventually. Yeah. yeah, but like. I blow it by those old men. <laughs> I'm actually bummed I can't go. My mom invited me to play pickleball with her friends tomorrow. Oh. And like, they are sick. It's crazy. <laughs> Are you just? Golf? But then I love playing against them because every time I go, I get way better. Yeah, it's true. Are you golfing like seventy-two holes tomorrow? No, I'm watching golf. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, speaking of doing some fun things, let's dive. What? Montana spring game tonight? Is that what you're talking about? Exactly. Yeah, no, some fun definitely things. not. But night game spring game yeah. in Montana in the spring. Oh, yeah. They're just leaning into it, being cold. It's going to be on the lights. It's going to be electric. Wow, okay. Henry, that Montana spring game uh -huh. could come into play in our draft. No mm -hmm. way. Which we're doing now. Uh, these three guys around me don't know what we're <laughs> drafting, but I've been sitting on this one for about a month, so I hope <laughs> it's good enough. We're doing the best sporting events to attend draft. Oh, wow. Oh, man. This so, is crazy. So best sporting events to attend. Okay, so it's like a specific thing. You wouldn't just say, like, a Broncos game. You would pick a specific one, right? I don't know. I think that could be I think, up to interpretation right now. Let's figure that out. Okay. I, I think that would be – I think you can be as specific as you want. You obviously couldn't take, like, I, like a major golf tournament. You have to pick one, you know? Yeah, right, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. But okay, if yeah. you want to say a Broncos game – like a Yankees game, Dodger game, go see Dodgers. I think that'd be allowed. And that's stuff that's happening now, not like stuff in the past, right? Right, yeah. right, right. Yep, yep. That's, that a, that's a good clarification. Too, yeah, that would be. Um, do we just want to go with how the board is built right now? Let's do it. And we can either get, start with Henry or start with Ryan? Who wants the first pick? Rock, Give it paper. To Henry. Rock paper. I'll take oh. uh, the Masters. Okay. I think and this I'd... was kind of in honor of yep. the Masters, so that is a damn... Damn good that's first why pick. You, that's so, why this was the plan a month ago. Yeah, well, maybe it was, it was actually there's something else. Oh, Masters. Oh. Mm. So the Masters is absolutely on my sports bucket list. Mm -hmm. Me too. Um, I would love to get there. But I would just have to add that it's definitely better to watch it on TV than it is in person. Even it's with too like, hard to see. Even with like the cheap food. Oh, that's great. But like we watched. I don't know. You just can't watch everything. You can only watch right. exactly. one That's hole true. or one group at a time. That uh -huh. is the flaw with golf. So do you get like, so, okay. Okay, yeah. I yeah. would just say and you about can't even have your phones at the Masters, so yeah. it's not like yeah. you could be streaming it. I would mm -hmm. just I mean, say with the Masters, it feels like one of the most sacred places. Oh, yeah. yeah so like exactly. being there would bring some extra juice. And like, you, you gotta, could come up with a game plan. Like, I'm not missing one of Tiger's shots the first two days. I'll figure out the rest after, but I'm just following Tiger the first two days. Saturday, if he's in it, obviously I might just stick with the same thing. Yeah. Sunday, it's like the leaders. Maybe maybe you stake out like the 18th hole or like maybe okay. 17, get like a good look so you can also like follow to 18. Okay. There's like game plans. Yeah. Good game plans out Henry's there. Henry's a guy that likes to stay on his couch all day uh -huh. and watch sports. Do you think he'd live following Tiger two days in a row? If Tiger can do it, it, he would have that kind of energy. If Tiger can do it, you energy. can do yeah. it. If Tiger's walking up those hills, I can walk up those yeah. hills. Have you seen this guy? He's had like 12 <laughs> back surgeries. Yeah, that's, exactly. that's true. I feel like the Masters is so iconic. That's the kind of place where you go with a Ziploc bag and just cut a piece of sod out. Yeah. Oh, like the 18th yeah. hole. If you're doing that, you probably yeah. find yourself yeah. in like... <laughs> you're done. Oh, the first and last... The last day of your life, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Not just Masters. Oh, yeah. All right, Todd, you're up. Number two pick here. Dang, I think for me, I'm going to say it has to be VIP, though. I can't just be there. Uh, I have to be like a VIP there. Uh, we assume any sporting event you go to. I was going to say, you're a VIP yeah. everywhere. Well, like, you know what I'm saying? I need yeah. a cart. <laughs> I need a cart to get around to oh, do my wow. stuff. But I would say uh, the Paris Olympics, VIP style Paris Ooh, Olympics. Man. I think that would be pretty dope. Man, that, Olympics are good. That's a really good one. 
Um, and honestly, another any, one like, though where I'm just thinking like any summer Olympics. But if you're yeah, VIP and, and think, they're running the hundred, I'm sitting at the hundred watching them run. Yeah, I think yeah. I think but you're missing is, like the triathlon. I'm missing with, like, the, the shooting. Uh, but see, and that's the, the thing. The, the, the <laughs> exactly, exactly. Like, but but there's like three things a day that you get to go see, mm-hmm. and like over two weeks, you're you're getting pretty much everything. You know, you I, I feel like there aren't too many major conflicts. Or you could be like the only person watching one event, like yeah. a very obscure event. Mm. Yeah, that would be a cool experience. Yeah, I'm just, I don't. Maybe I should love this one, especially for the business we're in. Um, but this is something that I get to watch every single moment of, and that's the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think this would be more so the Masters in terms of like the experience of it. Exactly. Like you're there, it feels you probably the air feels different there. Um, but like. I feel like, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna just shut up there because I can I can help myself later. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, um, so I'm going Super Bowl. I think that's a bad pick. Um, oh yeah. dang. Yeah. See, I'm, I didn't love it. Yeah, the Super Bowl is just like a bunch of rich people. Right. Yeah. What's wrong with that? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, the Masters is too. Yeah. But yeah. it's like it's a football game has a certain thing about it that I think the Super Bowl is completely void of. Uh, and that's why my number one pick, and you guys can tell me how specific or non-specific I can get with this. Like my number one pick would be a Broncos AFC championship game. Now you guys can make me say like Mm. a a home conference championship. Yeah. Uh, so, so I don't have that like Broncos slant to it, which I I would say is fair, but being at a home game for your favorite team with a chance to go to the championship game on the line is to me like the best best possible thing other mm. than a couple other things well no it is the best possible best possible thing as a football fan why i stopped myself is because i was going to say conference championship yeah. game yeah. like being just cooler in a different way and yeah. so i don't i don't disagree especially man todd the one that you were in mm-hmm. the orange out oh my goodness that was crazy. i mean i wait for those days again. every once oh. in a while i'll literally just go find it on youtube and i don't even need to watch the whole game i just watch the intro so true they oh. have the drone shot yep. over mile high and everything is orange and i it, like it just makes me happy mm-hmm. yeah oh, and the, just the electricity all right ryan you're up again all right uh here i'm going to go a ooh, okay I, some soccer. I know yeah, what you're thinking. Soccer thing. I know what you're the thinking. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but don't give people ideas. Maybe people <laughs> want to think about that. Maybe that was my next pick. That's actually what you just Golly. did is really wrong. Yeah, yeah. That was sick. Yeah, I was, yeah, was going to sit on that until the fifth round, and <laughs> yeah. no way any of these guys would have taken it. No. Um, I forgot there was a World Cup. Okay. I've been to a championship game in every sport. And I think mm. the best one uh, as a just sports fan what is a, a home he knew what he Stanley did. Cup playoffs game. Mm. A home Stanley Cup yeah. finals game. You can I just say like, Stanley Cup finals. Yeah, because all that's somebody's good. home. That is good. It's a really yeah. good one. Um, man, I was always going to go this direction with my number two pick. Um, so I'm just going to do it now. Since it's my number two pick, I'm going to go a World Cup final. That's what oh you said you hear? <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, no. I had it on my Dang. research list. Um, but, yeah, I mean, personally, I'm not a big soccer guy, but, like, the atmosphere does look absolutely insane. No, it is dope. Oh, and that's here, right? Well, the finals? Where, where's the final? The final is in a... Uh, Prop. Ugh. But Oof. the first game is going to be played at Azteca with Mexico. And I'm going to be Azteca there. Azteca Stadium. It's going to be Fallout Card. Like, I know, yeah. That's Mexico your, City. You're going to paint your chest? Is it Azteca at like 7,000 yeah. feet of elevation? It's higher than most places in the world. That's crazy. The, it's like, I'm so excited, but I'm going to like Fallout Card. The Broncos will play there at some point. Yes. That's going to be like we'll be there. maybe their next... Oh, hell yeah. It's going to be so cool. That's dope. All right, I'm up. Yep. Um, it's getting tough. I, I think I'm looking for, like, uh, unique adventures. So for me, it's kind of specific, but, like, I think pulling up in a yacht to the Monaco Grand Prix oh, man. <laughs> good would one. probably be a dope experience. A good one. <laughs> I probably won't uh, put the yacht on there. <laughs> yeah, the Grand Prix in Monaco. 
You sure you don't want like Indianapolis 500? You nah, could be I in think Indianapolis just... instead of Monaco. No, <laughs> <laughs> Indy's pretty nice. Could you could you guys point out Monaco on a map? Yeah. I think so. Ooh. I think <laughs> I could get well, close. Yeah, I could. I think uh, so. Let's go to. Yeah, it's be isn't it between France and Italy? Kind of right yeah. there on the coast. Yeah, my answer on the coast. would be no. Uh, <laughs> but I did do this thing the other day where Ali showed me it was like a TikTok thing. The shape of a state pops up, and then you have to drag it and place it on the map. Oh, mm. oh god! I got fifty out of fifty. Wow! There you go. Damn! Wow! I, I, shapes I think are easier than names. You might have gotten the name and the shape. I think you got the name and the shape. The names are tough. There's like a few of those. Like once you get. To the east coast past missouri oh, oh yeah. those ones are the real hard ones yeah mm -hmm. yeah what about yeah. capitals then no nah, no i don't no, know I'm capitals. i used to i'm actually yeah. disappointed that i don't know them anymore i just realized i have a back-to-back -back. oh no uh first i'm uh i'm gonna take give me the kentucky derby okay yep yeah solid i yeah. was i was sitting on the kentucky <laughs> derby uh, people that know me that have been to the Kentucky Derby say that it is would absolutely be my shit. Hmm. Interesting. I haven't been, like, but why? I would say why the same people... thing. I don't know. They just they just like go there and they're just like RK would love this. People think about me in that way. Man, you know when I think of the Kentucky Derby and having a good time, you know who I think of? Almost one of Todd's teammates. Wes Welker. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every time he, he was yep. having a great time. You he know what I'm talking work. about? Mm -hmm. And he's handing out like hundred dollar bills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, Henry, you're up again. I am. Um, give me a World Series game seven. Gosh, I know. That's take a good one. putting baseball on uh, on no, the list is. Are we, that's I don't a good think we're one. picking games here. Okay, yeah, just World, World Series. Series. Okay, yep. yep. Yeah, uh, I have been to a World Series game four, oh, and uh, it was to watch the Rockies get swept. Hey, but <laughs> at least I can say I was. I saw a team win the World Series. You like, did. Most people can't say that. I don't think. Ah, oh, man, that is that is cool. Yep. Todd, you're up again. A Red Sox fan got kicked out. By the way, whenever I say Red Sox, I feel like I'm saying something bad because we can't say the football team that starts with red anymore. That's true. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but a Red Sox fan came down onto my seat. So our, our seats were like three rows behind the Red Sox dugout. And the Red Sox fans like flooded our section uh, when, in the ninth inning, yep. which is like kind of crazy to me. But a person, I was like standing up, and then I turned around, and there was just like a forty-year-old man standing on my seat, and I was like, "Bro, what are you doing?" And he's like, "The Sox are gonna win the series," and I was like, <laughs> "Get off my seat!" <laughs> and then a security guard saw him, and he was like, "No," and he's like fighting back, and the security guard just took him out. I'm like, "Bro, you missed, <laughs> wow. awesome. you missed your team winning the World Series because you're just being an asshole." Wow. Wait, but let's go back. You were in the third row. Of Game Four of the World Series, yeah, Dang. wow, it's all about who you know. What an experience! <laughs> That's dope. Even back then, yep. How old were you? That was 2007. Yeah. So uh, wow. 15. Young RK had connections. Yeah. Damn. Uh, my mom let me stay home from school to try and buy World Series tickets. Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. even close. It was Never insane. Even, yeah, it was one of the worst experiences of my life. Like all of my family <laughs> tried to do that too. Yeah. Nothing. Yep. That's why I become a Rocky season ticket holder. Have you uh, done that? No. Oh. Reason to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, Todd. We uh, got to go speed round now. We got to go fast? Yeah. Uh, I have two that I feel like are dope. <laughs> I don't know if I want to... Which one I want to pick? Because I don't know what, like, where you guys' brains are. You're killing are. it on the speed. Mm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, 12 oh. Okay. Let me do... I heard that. Um... <laughs> I'll, I'll do this one first. Let me do uh, the finals at Wimbledon. Gosh, yeah. no. That's, that's exactly one. where I was going to go. So that is a good one. I will do, <laughs> well, okay. I'm going to choose uh, the, uh, uh, the, I'll go NBA finals. Okay. Yeah, safe. Uh, you're exactly. going to let me get it. So good job blocking me on that. Was that one of them? Okay. My next one hasn't happened yet. Huh. But it will happen this year. And I think it might end up being the single greatest sporting event that you could attend. What? I have no idea. A home college football playoff game. Oh. God damn it. That's so that, that is that happening is, that is the actually first time ever this year was I go to the 12-team playoff. Huh. Top four teams are going to get a bye. And then... Uh, 
four through eight will get home games against eight through twelve or nine through twelve. Uh, and I just, I mean, imagine like you know they'd probably get a bye. Like imagine being at Georgia or something for a home playoff yeah. game. No, I've no. This is I've, it. I've been to plenty. <laughs> this is it. This is a hell of a pick. Yep. Because I was trying to think like what college way do I take, and that's it. Good one. That yeah. was the one. Another that's one. a good one. Because uh, I had college stuff basically off my board. Because I was like, it's all neutral. Yep. Yep. I've been thinking. On, I've been thinking about that one a lot lately. Yeah, that's um, a good one. Probably gonna get one in Boulder this year. Um. Oh, God, I don't know where to go next. <laughs> the look Henry just gave Maybe you. Maybe just make that Rockies World Series bet. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea where I'm going here. Well, let's just go uh, Final Four. That's good. Yeah, It's safe, yeah. It's a good one. Henry, or no, Tot, no. Oh, you. Me. Um, <laughs> I will go, uh, oh, man. I'm just stay true to myself. I'm going to go the Iron Bowl. Mm, mm -hmm. get like a specific yep. college rivalry and what what i'm gonna make the case beats yours is this one is guaranteed to be a rivalry game yeah there's a lot of hate in the air yeah mm. exactly and close so a lot of fans from both sides all right todd uh okay so i'm glad i picked what i did because you were about to pick that mm. um so my next one is going to be uh whole 16 out waste management oh, oh nice. man wow, that good is one. good Wow. Um, <laughs> that I is... love how Todd has like tennis, golf, <laughs> F1, the Olympics. It's like, <laughs> no, it's no. all like <laughs> high class. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, out. like a lot of partying, too. Hella party. Got a party, yeah. baby. Yeah. yeah. But like with like Dom Perignon. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. Oh, classic. Yeah. On yachts. Yeah, uh, all right, Henry, round us out. I'll take. Uh, It was in my head a second. Oh, the Winter Olympics. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah. I was torn. I was attempted, honestly, to take the X Games, so that's not as good. Um, and then my final one. Give me the 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 British Open at St Andrews. Doubling up on golf, probably not good for the pole, but it's a good one. It, Historic. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I like it. It's just the Open. Yeah. We're in America. <laughs> I'm calling it the British Open. The Open to me is the You're US going to Open. Scotland? Like, yeah. So, <laughs> is there, Scottish, oh, you want to go to Scottish Open? When I'm there, I'm calling it the Open. But oh. no, that would be unclear. You yeah. go and you're like, oh, you're going to the Scottish Open? That's probably what they all say that's when they're in the Open. That's why they changed it. <laughs> all right, Todd, your final pick. Oh, this is tough. I'm trying to think now. Okay. Um, Someone wants us to take WrestleMania. Yeah, there's probably some like moon racing game we've never heard of, and it's gonna be Todd's pick. You said a moon racing? Yeah, so, uh, yeah. something that only Todd's people know. <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> dang, this is yeah. tough. It's like oh, those spaceships on Mars. Because we've, we've done so many. Mr. Rocket World Cup final was taken in the second round. Thank you. Maybe we just say World Cup on there. You hear? Thank you. I would, I, I would have made that case for myself if I were you too. Yeah, it's true. I, I'm I'm really trying <laughs> to think. You 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 blanking or are you deciding between a couple? I'm deciding. Be, no, I'm blanking mm. actually, but I'm gonna make a decision. He's like uh, the polo finals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna make a decision. <laughs> Croquet World Cup. Was there anything in Panama that you saw? Mm. Panama? No, there's no sports. No sports really in down Panama. there. Oh, that's a shame. No, there's sports. Yeah, just not big. Give me. You guys got all the good football ones. Yeah. Mm. Basketball. You could take, take a wild card game. You could take yeah. like a. <laughs> you could take like some other rivalry other than the Iron Bowl, yeah, like true. Ohio State, Michigan. Do you know Sac what State and Sac State. Do you know what they call that game? <laughs> Ohio State, Michigan is called. I was just reminded because I looked the, it up. No, I was thinking the Big House. It's not the big game. The starts with the. The game. Yep. God, that's lame. Nobody's gonna remember that. It is, yeah. It is. It is kind of lame. It's very I, hob, hob, snob, snob, hob. I have no I idea. I would use a different word. I don't know, but <laughs> I'm not saying the right word. We've done everything. I even tried to see if I can look something up. Uh, Once again, killing wrong. it on the speed. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do. I'll do this one. This one. I saw uh, Tour de France on there. Let's do that. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tour de France. That kind yeah. of Tour de France. fits the vibes of the rest of it. it yeah, does. yeah. You got to say it like that, Todd. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I will go 
I'll go opening day. MLB opening day. Which team? Um, Rockies. Oh, sure, Rockies. All right. Let's go. Rockies opening day. Rockies is... opening day just depends on. It's electric. I... Depends on what team or what year. Was it this show that I said that if you tested the blood alcohol content of Denver, I think it might be the highest. The average BAC of Denver might be the highest on opening day. That Definitely. Day, day of the yeah. Year. I don't even think it's close. I mean, like St. Patrick's Day. I don't think so. All right. Like uh, those people. Yeah. That was trouble. Hammered. Oh, Ryan, final pick of the draft. I'm last here. Uh, it's crazy to me that none of you guys respect the troops, but I'll take the Army-Navy game. Oh, wow. Mm. Yeah, it's a good one. It's a good one. At what, at, what, at what spot? I think it's usually at Gillette, is it not? Um, it? it just went to Gillette this past year okay. for the okay. first time. Oh, okay. I think typically Oh, is the Ravens? Baltimore. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think they've done that. Um, all right, oh, that's yeah. going to do it. We're going to put this over at DNVR underscore, sport, underscore Broncos on Twitter X, and you guys can vote on that. Yeah. There's one that I was thinking of that I didn't. Uh, I almost took the Iditarod. Wow. But I don't think that would have. Wow. I don't know how that would have played. It would be sick, though. Go up to Alaska, watch a dog sleds for like a week or whatever. A couple oh, weeks. Yeah. A month. Wow. Would've oh, been one that roots. I really want to go to that we didn't mention. Here's my honorable mention. Uh um, UFC like main oh car, main my event. god yeah I know somebody had commented UFC yeah. that's a UFC good one. 300 mm-hmm. is supposed to be crazy yeah, yeah. That's oh, what people say. I want to change it no sugar Sean though I couldn't think mm-hmm. man that last one was okay I would have went to Fitness 100 too or Physical 100 do you guys yeah. watch that on uh, Netflix that, no no oh it's good it, bodybuilding have, no, it's a hundred different uh, athletes, and they're trying to figure out who has the best physique through like physical challenge. Mm, so you have oh, everybody wow. from like professional rugby players to uh, wrestlers to bodybuilders wow. to police officers to special forces, like, mm. and they're all competing in different challenges. We should do that on our show. That'd be hilarious. The four of us. Let's oh, see I wonder who's talking about racing. <laughs> <laughs> that, would, that would be awesome. Everyone, have a great weekend. Enjoy the matches, and we'll see you on Monday on the DMVR Broncos podcast. <laughs> City like the mayor.